um, our, well, our little game, we call it You Do What For A Living. And hand on heart, I have no information about our next guest. It's a completely mystery guest. Apart from the fact I know their Christian name, and apart from the fact we know they do an unusual job in Wiltshire. In the next couple of minutes, um, can you beat me to working out what our next guest does for a living? I've yet to do this at all yet successfully. So, shall we play? Excellent. Sue Davis, are you ready for your afternoon show challenge on BBC Wiltshire? Oh, you better believe it. Your task is to identify the unusual job of your next guest. OK. You have no prior knowledge of the guest. This is true. You have just a Christian name, and you know that they work somewhere in the county. OK. You may ask as many questions as you like, but your challenge is to correctly identify their occupation before the afternoon show listeners do. So, if you are up for the challenge, let's play. You do what for a living? And it's Richard that we welcome this afternoon. Afternoon, Richard. Hi, Sue. Um, well, OK, as, as yet, I don't know if you know this, I have a completely uh, a 100% rate of getting this wrong. Right, well, this is dead easy, I'm sure you'll get is it. Is that right? I think you're <laughs> lulling me now into this. OK, so let's see if we can discover what job you do. How long have you been doing this job, Richard? 30 years. OK. Would, you, would the job be described as a sort of traditional job, a job that's been done over generations, or is it sort of more considered a more sort of modern job? Uh, traditional. It's a traditional job. Yeah. The fact you're in Wiltshire, is that important for your job? Not at all. Not at all, OK. Um, do, do you employ anyone? Or you, is there a group of you that do this job, or is it just you working on your own? Uh, doing what I do, I do it on my own. OK, you do it on your own. Do you do this job inside or outside? Inside. Is it always in indoors? Uh, not always, but most of the time, because of the rain. Because of the rain? OK, the rain. I'm loving that you're giving us extra clues. Well, I don't mind. Okay, I so said it was easy. So you don't like the rain? No. <laughs> you really don't like... OK, who, who really doesn't like the rain? OK, uh, are people surprised? Oh, how do they react when you tell them what you do for a living? They're surprised. They're surprised. So they're not offended by it or anything no. like that? They're no. Just, they're just surprised. OK. Is it a service you provide or, or do you produce a product? Uh, produce a product. You produce a product. So this product that you produce, would it be something I would ask you to do for me? Is an individual would do it or...? Uh, it is something you could ask me to do for you, but you may not. Okay. Is it, an, is it something I would be happy about you doing, or is, it, is there a problem that I would want you to...? No, hopefully it would be something you'd be happy for me to do for you. Okay, so something I'd be happy to do for you. Okay. Um, is it a physical job that you do, Richard? Yes. Okay, so, you, you know, you could be quite tired at the end of the day. Do you wear a uniform? No. Well, it's slightly disappointing, because I don't think anyone wears a uniform so far, I've been asking. OK, is it, is it a mucky job? Do you get dirty doing your job? Not particularly. That's not quite a no. OK. Um, do you, Is there any danger involved in your job? No. So no danger at all. OK. Do you have to have a head for heights to do your job? No. OK. Do you use a computer in your job? Um, would do because everyone does, but not not, not specifically not, to do is, the job. It is not at all necessary. So, okay, do you use tools though to, yeah. to produce what you what you produce? Yes. Okay, the thing you produce is it is it smaller than a no? Is it bigger than a mouse but smaller than a badger? Uh, it's bigger than both. It's bigger than okay. Is it smaller than an elephant? Uh, yes. Is it smaller than a... Is, I'm intrigued by my own references here. I'm just like I've been to Longleat or no something. No wonder you haven't got any right yet. <laughs> Richard, I don't need heckling from the mystery guest. OK, is it smaller than a Ford Capri? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, definitely. It's definitely smaller than... OK, is it smaller than a smart car? Well, a smart car. Um... Might be as long as a smart car. Oh, as That's long. Giving you far too oh, many clues. It's, 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 it's long. Um, I'm intrigued by this idea of rain. What if if it rains? Does it does it spoil what you produce? 
Uh, no, it doesn't, no. <sighs> See, now I've gone off on a completely different tangent now. And um, when I, when this product you produce, would I use it indoors? Would I use it outdoors? You'd use it outdoors. <gasps> okay, I'd use it outdoors. But not exclusively. Oh, you see, for a moment I was thought I was there, but not. And what colour is this thing you produce? Does that, that make any difference? What colour? Um, a natural colour. Okay, so it's a natural colour, this thing that you produce, that's long. Would I be right in saying it's long and thin, this thing you produce? Uh, yes. Okay, so produce something that's long and thin, and it's a natural colour. Um... Okay, the rain's not great. Do you use natural ingredients to, uh, you know, sort of, to, to, to produce this? Yes. You do? Okay, is there any kind of artistic aspect of what you produce? Um, are you an artist? Or would no, you... no. No, it's a bit more practical than that. Okay, um, I think I know. Right, Richard, hang on in there a bit, if that's all right. I am now... I don't know why I'm thinking of this. I think that is what Richard does for a living. Okay, right, I'm now going to put that in my little envelope. There it goes. Seal it up. And most importantly of all, can you tell me what you think Richard does for a living? 08459 513366. Remember, as yet, nobody has worked this out for the last four or five weeks. Can you have a guess what Richard does? Right? Thank you for your texts. Thank you for your calls. We've got Richard, our mystery guest, um, on the line at the moment. If you've got any idea what he does for a living, if you want to text, you've got 30 seconds to text now. 81333. Just put Wiltshire at the beginning of your text. We'll find out what he does in a moment. BBC Wiltshire. And Lee will pop in about 10 to 4 to tell us exactly what he's got lined up for you. But for the travel news, we were playing You Do What For A Living as I interviewed Richard, and that's all I knew about Richard, um, and the fact he does an unusual job. Richard, thanks for hanging on. That's OK. Um, well, I'll go through some of the calls and texts we had. So Good. just take them all in and don't respond just yet. I'll open up my envelope because my envelope says, I think you make fishing rods for a living. OK, we've got on the text, let's have a look. We've got, do, 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 do. we've got um, Andy Khan saying, are you? a cane furniture maker a bow maker says Chris Craig and Melksham saying do you make garden furniture or maybe you're a sculpture um, Pat and Pat is not alone with this along with Graham and Khan saying do you make coffins uh, Simon uh, the ghost hunter says do you make canoes um, are you a cooper are you a farrier says Bob from Rudlow Cloggy has gone for the sculptor line Carolyn Marmsley has gone for a blacksmith um, again Alan in Swindon has gone for making coffins Jean and Lynham that one step further, grave digger. Uh, again, Carolyn Melton's gone for the coop of the barrel maker. Sarah in Swindon, do you make ladders? Another coffin maker. And Lady Mary says, Lady Mary says you produce bonsai trees. So from sort of grave digger to <clears throat> bonsai tree maker, has have any of us got it right? Yes. What's you, you, got it right. Who's got it right then? That's not a... you, I'm afraid. Oh, but a good guess. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> okay then. So who's got it right then? What uh, do you do, I, Richard? I think oh, you, I hold think... on a minute. I've got to play the big jingle. Here we go. Oh, hold right. on. You do what for a living? Okay then, Richard. What do you do for a living? I think it was Chris who said I'm a bow maker. <laughs> genius of the afternoon show. Congratulations, Chris. You did say, yes, you're a bow maker. Right, yeah. So, I make uh, traditional English longbows. Is there much call for traditional English longbows? Yes. Uh, we send bows all around the world. Uh, we make uh, traditional bows for people involved in the sport of archery. It's not everyone who wants to shoot the Olympic style bow made from carbon fibre and all the rest of it. Uh, so a lot of people like the traditional English bow because of its romance and, and part of the history of this country. Uh, there's the Royal Company of Archers, which is the Queen's ceremonial bodyguard in Scotland. We make for them. Uh, we make for people involved in reenactment societies. We do display pieces for museums and galleries. Uh, we also make uh, arrows and all the accessories that go with uh, shooting the longbow. But um, originally, it was it was just the longbow that I was concentrating on. So, hence the, the size. So, so how 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 long could a longbow be? 
Uh, the average is around six foot, but it does depend on the length of arrow that the person draws, and that depends on the length of their arm. So you can have a short person with very long arms. So the, the length of the bow de is dependent on the length of arrow that an archer will draw, but uh, as an average, about six foot. Now, you... Clearly, when we talked to you, you didn't like the rain. So what's the problem of rain for a bow <laughs> oh, maker? No, if I'm working in the rain, obviously you don't want the wood, the raw wood, to start getting wet. Uh, so we, you know, it needs to keep that dry. When we've made the bow, it will be covered with a, a sealer of, of either a varnish, where we normally use these days. Uh, originally, it would have been a wax uh, and an oil, but nowadays we use a varnish. So once the bow is finished, there's no problem with it being in the rain. It's if we're making it, we don't want the wood... Uh, to to, uh, to absorb uh, too much moisture. So, how does your sort of traditional longbows compare to the longbows that would have been made centuries ago? Uh, most of the bows we make are based on the Victorian bows, which was a sporting bow, and they're very similar to those. If you go back further in time to the Battle of Agincourt period and uh, Henry VIII with the bows they found on the Mary Rose, those were war bows, and the physical draw weight of those is a lot heavier than the target bows we use now. An average man's bow probably has a draw weight of about 50 pounds. That's the effort needed to pull the arrow back, pull the bow back to full draw. The war bows would have been 100, 150 pounds because you were trying to shoot a very heavy arrow quite a reasonable distance, two or three hundred yards, and then actually penetrate uh, the armour that the knight was uh, wearing. They, they, had, they had big muscles in those days, didn't they? Mm, so, so how far can, your, can an arrow from, from one of your bows travel then? Uh, the, the record for a long bow is about 400 yards. Uh, the the ultimate rec record with a not a traditional wooden longbow but a, a modern bow is over a mile. That's extraordinary. And do you actually you know do do you take part in the archery yourself, Richard? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I compete. My wife, who uh, I said we don't employ anyone, we've got a family business. My wife makes the arrows, uh, my son works with me, and uh, although he doesn't compete anymore, my wife and I still compete in archery tournaments, yeah. And who's best, you or your wife? Uh, my wife has been national champion, so I suppose she's best. I think that's the correct answer. <laughs> uh, Richard, it's been a pleasure. Where, where exactly are you based? We're in Melksham. You're in Melksham. Richard, it's been a pleasure to have you as our mystery guest. The mystery no longer. Uh, Richard is a bow maker.